Hey guys, so today we're going to be making these really pretty um, flower jars. I got the idea off of Pinterest and I thought, you know what, those are going to be super cute. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them here in a second. But what I'm going to use for this is the Dollar Tree ribbon. You can use any kind. I'm going to use red. The Dollar Tree jars. I got these way back around Christmas time. My plan was to make um like snow globes or like candy globes I don't know didn't even it didn't end up doing it so I am going to use them as candy jars on my hutch and once I have it all together I'll show you my hutch and kind of how it pulls together but certain candies are going to go in these jars um, you could put whatever you want in there, honestly. You can gift them candy, you know, whatever. These can be decor or gifts, whatever you want to use them for. I got two bundles of flowers because I wasn't sure how many flowers it was going to take to cover the top of this. So I think two should be enough. And then I got these heart picks. They sell giant ones at Dollar General if you want to use bigger ones. But I think I'm going to stick these in between the flowers. I don't know yet. I may use these. I may not. It may just be flowers on top and then the ribbon. And then you are going to need some sort of glue. E6000 is a permanent glue. Um, it's industrial strength. So this stuff is awesome for permanent projects. But the thing with this, it does take about 48 to 72 hours to adhere. So you kind of have to leave it alone <laughs> and not mess with it. So if you want something that's like quick and like, you know, adheres very fast, I'd go for the glue gun. I'm going to start by pushing the leaves up towards the flower because I am going to leave those on. If you don't want to leave those on, it's completely up to you, but I like the added color and texture. So I'm going to clip right beneath the leaves and the flowers. I did end up using five flowers per jar. Also make sure you invest in a good pair of wire clippers because it's going to make your life so much easier. The next thing that I did was seal the end of my ribbon. Some ribbon tends to fray a lot and that's the type that you want to try to seal but be very careful because it can catch on fire. I also realized that this particular ribbon, the hearts were upside down so I had to move it and then peel off the cold glue and I realized that it's probably easier to apply the ribbon with the lid on the jar so I'm putting it in the right position so the ribbon isn't too low or too high. You also want to make sure that you're not putting a ton of glue on so it's lumpy and bumpy. Make sure the glue is thin but smooth but still enough that it's going to hold your ribbon on throughout the year. You're just going to go around the jar repeating this process every couple of spaces to make sure the ribbon is staying in place and not moving all around. Once you come to the end, you're just going to clip it, seal the ribbon again, being very careful not to burn yourself, and then just glue that last little bit down. I went onto the lid and then overlapped the ribbon so it would seal completely and gently push down so I wasn't going to burn myself because that tends to happen with the glue gun. Then I put a generous amount of glue on the part where I wanted to stick my first flower. I want to make sure that the flower is kind of overlapping the lid so you're not seeing the lid top when you're looking directly at it. Hopefully that makes sense. So I did like my flower to kind of lay over the lid. If you don't want that look, you can get away with using less flowers. But that's kind of what I was going for. So I would test out a flower first before putting the glue down so that way I knew the spacing and I wasn't getting any of those weird little gaps that I didn't want. And I'm just going to continue this process with all of the flowers, making sure I'm putting enough glue to keep them secure. I also found that some flowers fit better in certain positions than others. So you might have to twist the flower, adjust the petals, adjust the leaves to get that fullness that you are looking for. So just play with it. Don't be afraid to adjust things and move things around and it might take you some time but this is a very simple project 
and I really do like the way that it actually turned out in the end. So just play with it a little bit and it'll it'll come together. But you see that little white gap that I had there? That's what I was trying to cover up and by moving the leaves and the petals, I was able to do that and you don't end up seeing it in the end. Now you can totally leave just for flowers if you want, but I didn't like the way the top looked, so I went ahead and added another flower, and I really love the way that that looks. But some people may not like all of the flowers on here, so you know, anywhere from three to five flowers, you can add in the heart foam pieces if you want to. Uh, this was just what I loved the most. I've seen so many people do these so many different ways, so again take this as just a guide but this is this is the way that I really liked it are the jars I didn't end up using the the glitter hearts because I just I didn't really like the way they looked in there but feel free to add jars add flowers add whatever you want um, so that's what it's where it's gonna sit it's either gonna sit on this bottom part or the middle part I haven't quite decided yet because I have a few other things I need to add to figure out where it needs to go. But the other thing that I wanted to show you was these jars. I have a video on how I made these jars, what colors I used, um, but I just used a really good spray paint and then I used a gloss sealer, I used Dollar Tree ribbons, and then these are just the Dollar Tree flowers that I used um, this time around. And then for fall, I used fall color. I love using neutral paint for my jars because it, keeps me from having to make a billion jars and store them. Um, you can definitely go ahead and make these red or pink um, or just solid white. Use your imagination. But these are just old spaghetti jars that I saved and I painted. And I love the way that it looks. I love the neutral. But again, you can use whatever spray paint you want. I will put the video on how I created those jars in the description box. It's it's honestly very, very simple. And um, this summer I may create some more DIYs with spaghetti jars and just other repurposing projects. And here you see a little sign that I printed off. This is actually one of the Dollar Tree shadow boxes that I got. I went on PicMonkey, created this little sign that says hugs and kisses, 25 cents, put it on the shadow box and paired it next to the two jars I just created and then the jars up above that I've done in the past. I'm gonna fill one jar with kisses and the other jar with hugs. And I thought that that would be very, very cute. You can do this with any kind of candy. I just, you know, for video purposes, we're gonna do hugs and kisses this time, but I can guarantee that these are probably going to be filled with all different types of candies over the next few weeks. These may even stay up through spring because I really like the colors. I don't care that it has hearts on them. Um, I'm probably going to change that out or create a couple more jars for spring because my kids enjoy coming home and having a little treat after school. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little DIY from the dollar store to kind of help pull together your decor for Valentine's Day. And honestly, these probably can pull into spring just fine <laughs> so leave me a comment below letting me know if you have any ideas what I should put on the bottom part of, of my hutch because I really could not find anything that was calling my eye so I only have the two shelves done this is what they look like but I will see you guys soon for another Dollar Tree DIY type of video bye guys